When you talk about this conference, um, I, I think the first thing that comes to mind is depth. Um, you know, we did our, our preseason uh, poll, you know, uh, a few weeks back here. And when I looked at the teams and I'm saying, I can't put them eighth. It, 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 you know, and when you look at the poll, and I, I don't know if it's out publicly now. It, uh, okay. Um, you know, the eighth place team has a first place vote. And I don't know how many conferences in the country, you know, can, can uh, claim that. You know, so I, I think the CAA and then you look at the coaches in it and, and those four guys that have been, um, I mean, they're mainstays. And ultimately, that's what, that's what I want. You know, that's what I want in Elon when you, when you look at a William and & Mary and Coach Laycock, uh, you know, and, and with Villanova with Coach Talley. I mean, they're, they got it. You know, they've got this thing figured out, and they've done an unbelievable job with the consistencies in their programs. And, you know, when you look at Mac and, and what Coach Cosgrove has done at, at Maine, uh, that longevity, you don't see that anymore. Um, and I think the CAA, you know, it says something about the conference that those four schools, do, do they win every year? Maybe not, but they're pretty doggone consistent. And, you know, when you have a coach that's been there 20 plus years or 30 plus years in Coach Laycock and Coach Talley's uh, cases, I mean, it's, uh, I think it's a special conference and we're really excited to be a part of it. We looked at all our opponents, you know, that, that we will play on, on film this uh, spring and summer. Um, but it's both ways too, you know, so I, is it a disadvantage in some ways? Maybe. But uh, as I said earlier, I, I do have a familiarity. You know, I, I know of a lot of the head coaches and, you know, a lot of the assistants, you know, like I said, haven't spent a lot of time in the Northeast in my career. Uh, there's a lot of the coordinators I know and assistants that I know. So you kind of have an idea. And you know the coaching fraternity. It's, uh, it, it, it's a pretty close-knit one. Um, but I, I look at it from our standpoint, well, that's the same for us too, though. You know, we're, we're a new school and uh, in the conference. So... Uh, their familiarity with us and what we might do, uh, it could play to advantage to our, you know, uh, on our part as well. A lot of people uh, equate us with a spread team because we have thrown the ball well and we're a no huddle team. But we're, um, you know, you go back to our years at Elon, uh, we, we had a great quarterback by the name of Scott Riddle. He, he still holds a, a ton of FCS records and Southern Conference records. Um, then we went to Ball State and Keith Wenning, who's playing here now for the Ravens. He was a draft pick for them in this past draft, uh, and he holds every record at Ball State. So we've been able to throw the ball well over the years, but there's that equation of the quarterback. And whether or not we have that guy in our program, uh, I, don't, I don't make any um, hesitancy. The quarterback is different for me. Uh, I, don't, I don't look at him the same as I do the left guard. Because in, in the success that I've been able to achieve, it's always been uh, that position that's been the driving point of it. And uh, we'll work hard every day to develop the best quarterback we can develop. Um, it, but we've been throwing the ball. We're a no-huddle team. We'll set a pace to the game. You know, no-huddle, though, nowadays, right, it, it, that's the standard. You, you know, very few teams are uh, huddle. I, I think we're a little unique in our no-huddle in that we're, we're not always a fast team necessarily. You know, we have the ability to slow it down um, and play at the pace we want to play at, uh, but you always have that threat to be able to play at a fast pace. So um, high flying Phoenix, we'll, you know, time will tell that, but we are coming to work every day. And uh, like I said, the, the quarterback position for us will, will, you know, indicate, you know, how high flying we end up being. Football's football, and, and when, I, when I came back to Elon, uh, and, and now we're going to the CAA, it, it was, and we are so excited to be in this conference, but it was a little bittersweet. You know, the, the years that I spent at Elon, we had some, some great, great games with App State and Georgia Southern. I mean, uh, games I'll remember, you know, from over my career. Um, the game is the game, though, and, and, and I think uh, it, it's become less regionalized as well. You know, back in the day, you know, the Big Ten used to have a certain personality in the Pac-10, whatever it is now, Pac, I can't keep up, um, had a certain personality. I, I don't know if that's the case. I mean, the, the, the college football game is shrunk. It, it's the way the world has gone. So I, I don't know how much the football is going to change. I mean, we're still, you know, you got to play with good fundamentals. You can't turn the ball over. You know, the things that, that are always going to be there. So I don't know how much the conference is going to play into that. Um, I do think our location, though, being the southernmost football playing school in this conference, um, here's all I'll say. There, there is uh, 
there's plenty of good football in the Southeast. And um, I think there's a reason the SEC is what it is. And I, I do think that our location is going to be an advantage for us from a recruiting standpoint. Elon's such a, um, it, it really is, the leadership, President Lambert, um, it, it's, a, it's a national story in higher education, what he has done with that university. And our footprint of student body is, is kind of the CAA footprint. Our second most represented state is Massachusetts on our campus, you know. But when I interviewed for the job football-wise, I made it very clear that the Southeast is going to be where we focus. And um, that doesn't mean we're not going to go into some of the territory of the CAA schools, but uh, we're going to start in our state. That's the way we've always done it. I think North Carolina has very good football. and. South Carolina and Georgia and Florida and Virginia is really the, the five states we're going to focus on. And uh, thus far for the 2015 class, things are going really well recruiting-wise. We have a decent amount of um, experience in our program, but there's some positions where I think we'll be, be relatively young. And, and the offensive line will be one of those positions, and, uh, and that's okay to me. Uh, when we were here in 06 and then built it through 2010, um, that was kind of the way we did it. You know, those first couple years, we played some young offensive linemen, but the more they developed both physically and mentally, you know, on the field, it, it kind of paid off for us as time went on. But it's been a good group to work with. We had a, a productive spring practice. The summer's been great for us. We've had just about every kid on our campus for the whole summer. And, um, you know, we're, we're definitely making progress. You know, when, when you're young, you don't think much of experience. But as you get more experience, you know, I'll be doing this almost 30 years, and I think um, the longer you do anything, um, you, you have a tendency to become a little wiser. You know, you might not talk as much, <laughs> but I, I do think um, the experience that I had previously at Elon helped me prepare for this job looking ahead, and, and certainly the experience I had at Ball State the last three years um, I, I think will help as we move ahead.